G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. I'm back out with the Helicontex Bergen backpack. This Friday coming, I'll be heading off doing a overnighter a bit further down the Bibble one track from where I am now, which will be a total of about 42 kilometers. So I thought I'd pack the Bergen up and come and do a two and a half, three kilometre walk out to the shelter and test all my gear out and see if there's anything I need to add or anything I can take out but everything I can think of at the moment fits inside the pack and I've still got the option of putting more in and expanding the top of the pack and also the lashing points on the top of the pack or on the bottom if I wanted to carry more. My pack weight with what I need to do the overnight on Friday, that's food two litres of water, my shelter, that's my hammock, under quilt, top quilt, tarp, uh, my cook kit, med kit, basic hygiene kit, uh, all that sort of stuff. It weighs in less than nine kilos. So the, the weight is not that bad. But the, the small pack, like I said, with your water, once you put water or hydration bladder inside the pack in the hydration bladder pocket or pouch, whatever you want to call it, you are going to lose that weight, not the weight, you are going to lose that space. So with having two litres of water in there, including the bladder, I'm losing roughly two litres in space in the pack but I've still been able to fit everything in there without compressing the top quilt and bottom quilt all the way down to the smallest. What makes it easier is they're both down and our plans are for next summer here in Australia is to get a 950 fill down top quilt and bottom quilt and just set a rating, I think in, in America it's the 40 degree. So that's the uh, 5 degrees here in Australia, that's degrees centigrade. So they should be able to compress down even smaller, which will save me more space in the pack. And like I said, I've still got the lashing points on the top and on the bottom. And I've got room in the pack still to slip a couple more days worth of freeze dried food if I want. Do you know what I did again? I just spent time emptying the pack showing you what's actually in here. And I left the microphone clipped on to the strap. So as I was turning around, we would have been getting all the banging and you would have not heard me properly. So instead of putting it all in and taking it out again, I'll show you what I've actually got and leave it out there. But in the pack, I've got my Laplander saw in that side. Uh, I've got my mower knife in that side. In the front pouch, I've got a couple of tuners just in case they get stuck out overnight or two. So that will keep me going until I can be rescued or I can get to a pickup point. I've got my tear gear Gossorg hammock which has got a built-in bug net and in case I need to go to ground I've got my Thermarest Neoair Uberlite medium sleeping mat and a Cetus Summit Eros pillow premium uh, just a regular size I know they're not needed but they just give me comfort if I need to like I am at the moment at a shelter here, I could always just blow the air mat up, 
So my top quilt, bloody pillow up, and I'm sorted for the night. I don't forget the hammock or find any trees that are suitable. Right, well, that's not compressed all the way down, but I think that one is by the fields of it is yeah, that's the bottom quilt for the fields of it. So that will be compressed down even further to oh that's the top no actually that's the bottom quilt and that's the top quilt by the fields of the weight. So the bottom quilt is a bigger one and I can still compress that down even more. So they were in the main compartment of the pack, both of them. The hammock was in the main compartment. The air mat was in the main compartment, the pillow in the main compartment, uh, the down pillow for the hammock was in the main compartment. What else did I get have in there or did I not? Yeah, that's what I also showed was this top sewn in pouch inside the pack. That's got my basic first aid kit in there and a snake bite kit flies are really friendly today and I didn't bring my bug net to go over my face but that's okay so uh, this front pocket here that I've got the tuna in was my cook kit which is my 550 tokes with a cup in there 100 gram gas knife fork spoon tea bags coffee uh, beside that went a freeze dried meal and on top of that was my purification kit for water. Side pouch on this side, my electronics went in there, where am I, where am I? My hygiene kit went in there and my hydro pack collapsible one litre water bottle went in there too. In the other side pocket, I have some hoochie cord if I need it. What else went in that side pocket was pegs. My multi-tool with the hammer on it. My ridge line and my Helicon Tech Super Tarp Small, which is two meters by 2.5. And I've brought that out to test it with the Goshawk hammock and I'm going to be putting that up in a diamond configuration. Also inside the pack I have two litre water bladder. When I had everything in there and I made the mistake of leaving the microphone on here, I showed that I had a bit more space on top where I could have got three or four more days worth of food in there. Uh, I could have compressed these down more which get, would have given me even more space inside the pack. And like I also mentioned, I've still got the lashing points top and bottom to use. Now the top pocket, I've got lashing points. There's my straps, map, my uh, Sunto MC2 compass, which can be used either north or south of the equator and you got a mirror on it, so you can use that as a emergency signal. So I'll do a review about this one day too. Very good compass. Not the cheapest, but very good. Let's put that back on it. And also in this top pocket, I have a emergency blanket or the emergency bag which you climb inside instead of just wrapping around you. I've got some uh, cleaning wipes and alcohol wipes just in case I get a cut and I just want to clean it and it's not bad enough to put a band-aid on so I'll just give them a wipe with that it'll save me getting the first aid kit out of there let's get them back in Straps are made for the top, put buckles on so I can lash anything I want to the top of it. Yeah. 
And like I said, I've got some um, whoppy slings for the hammock there too. So all that, all the hammock gear will be going in with the hammock, which will fit inside. So that will all be in one place. And is that it? Oh, my tree straps over here. Which are okay on the trees with the hard bark. And I've got some cinch buckles on. So there'll be extra adjustment for my hammock if the trees are a little bit further apart. I can use a whoppy sling and I can also use that. Get off. We oh, didn't like that. Spider. So going back to, that's another set of straps. I actually made them up this morning. And I took the cinch buckles off another strap because this one is all uh, basically my multicam kit. So my hammock is the multicam, tarp multicam, the straps multicam. And I've actually got an under quilt protector, which is a multicam, which I haven't bought with me. So the top quilt and the bottom quilt is the same color as the, the pillow, which went inside too. So what I'll do is I'll go over to the two trees I'll be using for the hammock. And I'll show you the hammock. So you've got an idea, because it's not the smallest of hammocks. So you can see what actually does go in here properly, rather than me just taking it all out. I know the camera's at an odd angle with using this tree and the far one, but I've got the camera set up in the shade because it does have a habit of overheating and turning off when it's in the direct sunlight. And today they forecast 27 and at 10.20 it was already 28 degrees, so yeah, a little bit warmer where I am. So first thing up the tree straps, which I made this morning to match the multi-cam gear I've got. Some water dropped on there, I don't know where that came from. Next will be the whoppy slings. will be the continuous ridge line well not the ridge line the continuous loop on the gathered end of this hammock flies going in my eye that's why it's all been twisted and the same this end And on the end of these whoppy slings, I've got a whoppy hook. Let's tighten it up a bit more. Try and keep the hammock off the floor for now. Oh, I don't think it's going to work. Let's slide that in the middle. There you go. That help hold it up a bit. Next is the top quilt, the bottom quilt, which is your insulation for keeping you warm, and my pillow. Pillows aren't really needed, but it doesn't really do much just as in the sense of support, and it just gives you, uh, it does support a little bit around your neck and stop you rolling, but it just gives you that comfort. It's a little bit of a comforter, I think it would be more described as. And especially in the winter, that actually acts as a little bit more insulation. It's very, very nice. Now you're down top quilt, bottom quilt, pillows or sleeping bags. 
shouldn't be kept in your compression bags. You should have a storage bag which is much bigger, which allows the down to loft up. So it helps keep its loft and it lasts a lot longer. And this it's the top quilt, this one. So think about it, this is all coming out of a uh, 18 litre, or was it 16? I think it's the 18 litre backpack. <laughs> to be honest, with all these flies, I'd be glad to get in the hammock and just have a, a break from them. Especially with having this nice fine no sea on mesh on it, which even the small midges can't get through. but it still lets in some of the breeze. And in the cold weather, even though it is a mesh, it actually holds a little bit more heat in your hammock. So in a sense, that could be classed as an insulation too. Now the reason, another reason I brought out the top quilt and bottom quilt, especially the bottom quilt, is the last time I used it, I didn't have it set right. So I had to put my feet over the edge of the, the actual quilt in the hammock to get a proper lay in the hammock. So I'm going to adjust the under quilt today so it fits and I get a more comfortable night's sleep. So that looks like the foot end. And this is the head end. Now this is the top quilt and bottom quilt are the uh, hammock gear uh, economy ones, I think they call them. <sighs> so I'm gonna loosen, that one's all the way already. these collars to make the hammock wider. And to be honest, when I'm planning to go out this Friday, the temperature is only going to be getting down to, I think they said 11 degrees centigrade. So it's not going to be really cold. Cold enough to need a under blanket. just to keep the chill off, but not cold enough to have to really cinch it up. So there we go, that's... So everything's undone to its maximum, except for this side. Let's undo that a bit. That'll give the under quilt a bit more play. To be honest, I think that the bungee cord going through that could be doing, uh, be doing with it being a little bit longer, but that's all right. Side and then all the way, that side is too. So. And over. There. Looking good. Oh, here's my bank line here. I've made up some physics, so it makes it a lot easier for me to attach the hammock. So I've made five altogether. Uh, attach the tarp, should I say not the hammock, sorry about that. I've got one here actually for the tarp. Then I've got three more in the middle. 
So if I wanted to drop my lantern there or anything, hang out anything, some clothes up there to dry out. And this end, there's a third one for the middle, so that's the fourth one. And another one this end for the top. And if you haven't used a Prosec knot before, they're great little knots for this sort of thing because as soon as you pull on them, they tighten up. So your tarp's gonna go nowhere. But as soon as you loosen it off, it will slide up and down the line. Actually what I'm gonna do before I put that up, I'll actually hang this up on there for now. That's the tarp hanging up. Is I'll give this a try out. So see if I can get that proper lay in it. Actually, this is a one tigress ID and wallet pouch. Great little thing. I've had a look on their site and they're not making them anymore for some reason or I can't see them on the site. But I'll send them an email and find out and I'll show you this in a future video. I'll hang that to the same one. Well, yeah, I've got a few things I need to get out of my pocket. It's my wallet in there. Put my car key in there, so I'm not going to poke that through the hammock. So I'll hang that over there, the top quilt, so I'm not going to need it. Just going to give it a bit of an airing. And a bit of a pop out to the allow the down to expand fully and do the foot box in it. That's it, let's get a Great hammocks, uh, great under quilt and top quilts, hammock gear make. That, <laughs> it's just great. As you can see, it opens up to a blanket. So if it gets too warm, you just undo it and you can kick your feet out, your legs out either side or your arms out. You can either, even use it with the sleeping mass when you go to ground. Great bit of kit. Let's give this a go, shall I? Always important that if you're going to do an overnight or something, or even if it's just a day walk, try your gear out first. Make sure you know how to set it up. Nothing's missing, nothing's damaged. And if you set it up like hopefully uh, I'm going to do today, when I get out on Friday night, all I'm going to have to do is pull it out, hook it up, and that's it. It's going to save me so much time and effort. So. Let's undo the boots. Don't want a chance getting any stones and ripping the hammock and falling to the ground. I don't know if you hear, I've got about a dozen or so flies flying around me. Maybe I need another shower. Okay, there's the boots off. Oh, oh I've just taken them off after the short walk in. Feels good. My pillow. Oh yeah, that works. I've still got the under quilt protecting my feet and it's coming all the way up here over my shoulder. So that's keeping me warm all the way underneath, which actually at the moment is too warm. So let's have a feel. Yeah, that, that's gonna work good, I think. 
so all I'm going to have to do now is put it back in its compression sack until I get home then I'll put it in its storage pack uh, bag just so it can stay lofted up and then put it all back in the compression sack on Friday morning so I'm going to take this under quilt off now and hang it over the side there and let it get a bit of an air into and what I've done on these is I've just put a little espina the night night lies is it or night eyes espina just makes it a lot easier to Makes it a lot easier just to connect it onto the whoppy sling at either end. Or oh, actually, it's not the whoppy sling, it's connecting over to the continuous loop, which is holding the end of the gathered hammock together. See what that feels like now without. A lot of you probably already know about your hammock. If you're going to be using it as a seat and it's easy to get in and out, you want it to set up so you can sit in it with your feet touching the floor. Now I know from use this is about an inch, inch too high, but over the next couple of hours of sitting in it and overnight laying in it is, is going to drop a little bit not that much but enough but it's still going to be a nice comfortable uh, seat and if you wanted to you could always just double it over where the zip is put the zip right to the back and then sit on there and you don't have the zip pushing on the back of your legs and it's a lot more comfortable like that Let me get in there now and feel the difference without the under quilt. Because like I said today, when I was walking in it had reached 28 degrees centigrade. So what's that? That's nearly 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So an under quilt isn't needed. Oh, that feels nice. I can feel the coolness of the breeze blowing underneath me. Oh, I feel the heat of the sun, so I'm gonna give the tarp a go. Give me a bit of shade. I have had this out to put some lines on it, some guy ropes. But I haven't actually set it up yet. I did once over the the garden hammock frame. Well, that wasn't the best. So Where's my center? That's the way this one works. That will, <clears throat> but it join the two pieces, goes across, not down the length of it. That's what was confusing me. Uh, <sighs> bloody flies. Hey, almost. I swore then. Let's get a stick into the toggle. Bring the Prusak to the loop. And that ends done. Like I said earlier, I'm going to do it in a diamond configuration.
find another stick. I'm going to, I normally have two small carabiners, so I'm going to get the carabiners and reattach them to this. I think they're on a, a different tarp at the moment. Oh, I'll just go and buy some more. I have to get all my tarps out, I think, and check them and set them all up so they've all got the guy ropes on and these small carabiner to make it easier to attach. I can come down a little bit more. What I have just done with that is I've put the hammock, oh no, the hammock, sorry, I keep doing that. I've put the tarp over the ridge line. Like I pointed out, the loops did with the fusset knots underneath to hang things on. So they're actually underneath the tarp so that I can actually use them. It'd be waste time me putting the ridge line over the top because I'd lose use of them for underneath the tarp for at night or if it's raining or anything. But this tarp in diamond configuration, like I said this is the Helicontex Super Tarp Small, it fits nice over the Gossalk hammock. If it was to rain I'd have to drop the tarp down probably six or eight inches to reduce the chance of uh, getting the hammock wet anymore. But as it is now, it's gives me, it gives me great shade from the sun. So, and the actual hammock, we've got some bungee cord. And there's some pull-out points on the hammock. Which I'm going to install now actually. You can pull out both sides because you can lay either left to right or right to left in these, this hammock. But I'm just going to pull out the head end and the foot side end. We've by the looks of us having this tarp in a diamond configuration. I can run this bungee down to the um, same peg. Let's just put a knot in there, a figure eight. So I can get that open easier. I don't know if you can see that. It's actually pulled the side of the hammock out where my head goes, or where my shoulder will be. So I'm not gonna have any of this material falling in my face. But when I get in with this being bungee, that'll move with me. So it's not gonna be held up right in my face all the time or making it tight and uncomfortable. I think I'll be able to do the same on the foot end. So that's going to save me having to use more than two pegs. Let's do another figure eight knot. Tie the end. Put it over the peg, and that's pulled the foot end out just nice. So that's really good. I'm pleased with that. Let's give you a walk around from the outside before I show you underneath. So as you can see there, that's about twelve, yeah, about twelve, fourteen inches clearance over the end of the hammock. 
And like I said, we've got in diamond configuration going down to one peg, which has got the guy on it and the bungee to the hammock. The same here, 14, yeah, it's probably a little bit more, so about, so just sit the other way, one inch will probably be balanced centre, but that's good as it is, because my head's this end. But there's the toggle going through the bank line for signal I made. So that's, as you can see, it's holding it nice and tight. Coming down to the same on this side. Going down to a single peg. With the guy and the bungee cord. And the stick being used as a toggle going through the bank line this side with the Prusik knot on. So that's the space I've got at the moment before I get in the hammock. That's about six to six or seven inches between the edge of the hammock and the tarp here. But soon as I get in the hammock, as you can see, it's dropped. So that's giving me, what's that? About 14 to 18 inches to the ridge line, to the structural ridge line in the hammock. So like I said, if it starts to rain and gets a bit heavy, I can drop the tarp down and that'll give me more protection. Just do that zip up a little bit more. So to show you what I mean with this bungee cord pulling the side of the hammock out. Let's take my boots back off. There's another advantage of using a hammock with a tarp having that ridge line. You've got a built-in clothesline. Just that down so you can see better. So here we go. Pillow. Hides and mozzies get out. So as you can see here, it, it's pulled the hammock out, keeping it right away from me. So when I do the fog net up, the bug net's not coming in on my face. So when the mozzie's on the outside, they can't bite me on the inside. I haven't done a full review of this yet, but the more I use it, the more I'm liking it. Okay, I've come into the shelter, but it's a little bit cooler. What have I learnt today? Well, I've learnt that I have to get two more carabiners uh, for the Helicontex Super Tarp Small. That'll make it uh, a lot easier to use. It's not necessary, we just saw I've just used a couple of uh, sticks as toggles. Going to the Pressic Knot loops. I'm happy with that tarp, the size of it. I think it's going to be a perfect one for the summer. Uh, especially when the temperatures in the evenings and nights get to the 20 degrees centigrade, I'm not going to actually need uh, an underquilt because it's what I've noticed in the past is an underquilt hasn't been needed for me personally. It might be for you, it might be a lower temperature that you're comfortable with that under the quilt, so that's your choice. But going getting to the under quilt, now I've had it out and adjusted it, basically I've un un undone it all, just set, set it back to, let's say reset, so it's the original, where none of the toggles have been pulled, none of the cords have been adjusted or tightened, 
and as that, that fits perfect on that hammock, I get a nice lay. I'm not having to put my feet over the side of the under quilt. So something I've learned today. And on my other hammocks, I've been able to cinch them ends up and still get the flat lay. So if you are going to be using the goss hook, you're not going to have to adjust it that much, your under quilt, uh, to keep warm, to make it work the way it's meant to. Top quilt, way too warm for the daytime today. Like I said, it was 28 when I was walking in at 10.20. So, yeah, as soon as I laid in the end, I just started cooking with the, the heat of that, even having it next to me. It was just getting too warm. But uh, both top quilt and bottom quilt are hanging up now, airing, uh, lofting up. So just for the short journey walk back, which is about 35 minutes for the 2.6 kilometers. Then the drive home of about another 35 minutes. And then I'll get them out and throw them in their storage bags so they can loft back up again. I won't leave them out of the bags because as some of you have seen, I've got a cat or a kitten and that little bugger loves getting into things and I don't want him clawing an expensive downfield under quilt and top quilt. So I'll have them up and out, hanging out the way. The hammock, I'm very happy with that. Very happy, like I said, if you're in Australia, I got it from a company called Tear Gear and it's a goss hawk. They don't do it in the camo anymore. I'll, I'll let you know that, but they do have some other colors. Same uh, shape, same size. I think they've got two sizes to be honest. I'm not sure now, but it, it is a high quality, high quality hammock. So that set up, I can use in the winter. I think I'll get used the uh, the three by three tarp I got, which will give more cover. Yeah, I'm I'm actually waiting for the Helicontex super tarp to come in, the three by three size. But nobody, I can't find them anywhere. I found one store in S Singapore, and they wanted some extortionate price, some something like, I think it was about 150. Australian dollars and another hundred and eighty dollars to have them delivered Or have it delivered which I'm not gonna be paying when I can just wait until they bring them back out and get one for around the 99 Australian dollars Oh, excuse me something flew in my mouth then so, Yeah, so that, that, I think that's anything I'm gonna actually need to add is them two carabiners So I'm happy I came out to realize that it just makes it a lot easier to set up and take down uh, oh yeah and probably use the carabiners on the tree straps as well uh, I'll add a carabiner to each one of them so it's just a matter of clipping it rather than taking it around and bringing it through with the loop I can just bring it around a tree and clip the carabiner over mosquitoes so that will save me a little bit of time and give it a little bit more ease. Uh, yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm happy with the way it's set up. So Friday, like I said, there's a couple of carabiners for the tarp and a couple of carabiners for the tree straps. I think that, that's going to do me for Friday. Water wise, the temperature is going to be even warmer than today. So I'm gonna to have to carry uh, at least three liters of water. And I might take some of the stuff out of the side pocket and put another liter in there with the expandable, uh, this little hydro pack, one liter water bottle, expandable one. So that'll, that'll make four liters. And I'll top it up when I get to the shelter, I'll use the the Sawyer's Mini Purification and Purify My Water. So I've got fresh water to drink walking back. And then after that, 
Well, I already am planning my next one from dwelling up down to Collie. But because of work, I've only really got four days where I can sort it out. So I'm going to have to do that in two halves. But arrange a pickup from roughly the halfway point, which is an unsurfaced road. So that means somebody who's got either an all wheel drive or a four wheel drive. Either that or ask my brother to drive one of mine down there and pick me up. Uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if it's the first time you've been to my channel, please go down below and click on the subscribe button. Uh, click on the like button and the notification bell next to the subscribe button so you can be notified of all future videos. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much. So until next time, get out there, have some fun and take care.